Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi filling in for Wing Commander Alex Jones on this Friday, September 4th, 2015 broadcast. Coming up in the next segment, Alex joins us with a key video. He's going to respond also in this show to Louis Farrakhan's calls to start killing people. But specifically, he's got a video breakdown coming up in the next segment that is absolutely essential to watch. Also, I know you miss Alex, but this show is absolutely jam-packed with exclusive key news. We're going to break down the newest segments of Black Lives Matter calling to kill cops, the newest attacks on the police, and also we're going to get into some real news, not just distractions. Headlines that we have today include Iran commander, we're getting prepared to overthrow Israel. Migrant smuggling in Europe is now worth billions. And from Infowars.com, we have a massive, massive stack of absolutely ludicrous news here, such as shock video, man dies in jail lobby after encounter with sheriff's deputies, U.S. military ordering troops in Iraq to dust off chemical weapon suits, New York clerk's office will issue marriage licenses Friday without the clerk, and a lot of other news including some economic news and the economic collapse. We're also going to get into Trump. We're going to take your calls. And we have a very special guest, Dr. Mercola, the largest natural health website in the world, Mercola.com. And we're going to speak with the March Against Monsanto founder on a little bit of a short update. And we're really going to get into key things that you can do, solutions economically, whether it's health or going along the lines of this breakdown in the economic system. For example, we have this from CNS News, record 94,031 Americans not in labor force. Particip participation rate stuck at 38-year low for third straight months. S&P hovers near correction. Dow plunges triple digits after jobs. Greenspan, the Fed can't solve every problem. Of course not. They actually create all of the problems. And U.S. job growth slows. Unemployment rate falls to 5.1%. Obviously, we are in a state, no matter how you look at it, where there is so much corruption and so much deception and so much collapse in all areas that it seems, it seems as if there's nothing we can do about it. But the truth of the matter is, and so many people talk about, oh, I want positivity, I want solutions and all this. The best way is to cover these issues. That's what this show is so powerful in doing. And like I said, Alex is coming up next segment to cover a lot of these different issues. He has a key breakdown, actually just shot it. And it all ties in with the idea that if we can really highlight this information, we can do something about it. I also want to hear later on today your calls on Trump because the newest attack on Trump is that he's apparently fumbling questions on terrorist leaders. We have the breakdown of the interview here in which he has asked about some of the al-Qaeda type operatives and he doesn't know their name. Oh my. And he kind of says, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal because there's new al-Qaeda operatives all the time. And by the time I'm president, it'll probably be an entirely different set of individuals. But apparently the liberal media thinks that him not knowing some names of these operatives is the biggest attack yet, as they call it. So we're going to get into that. We're also going to talk about in some new ways that we found whether or not Trump is the real deal. So today on this broadcast, I think what it ultimately comes down to is sifting through the distractions. I mean, we have these Black Lives Matter individuals, you know, the phony ones, saying that it's time to kill cops, and obviously it's happening, shooting cops at the gas station for pretty much no reason at all other than to kill someone. So we're going to go ahead and break down all that information, talk about the true Black Lives Matter, quote unquote, true Black Lives Matter protesters versus the ones that just want to incite this type of violence and how I think we can really solve that problem based on the analysis of numerous experts. Because today we have headline MPD officer confronted by crowd, punched, police say. And in this article, they talk about it's time to go on the offensive. It's time to kill cops. It's time for mass chaos. So we will be back in the next segment with Alex Jones. He has a key video, and he's going to also talk about some of these subjects. And today we have his message to Louis Barracon. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here on this live September 4th, Friday worldwide broadcast. Anthony Gucciardi is going to be co-hosting the show today. I'm going to have special reports followed throughout the transmission. And we have some special guests as well. Dr. Mercola with the largest health site, alternative health site in the world, will be breaking down some major developments coming up in the second hour today. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the globalist buildup towards world financial collapse is certainly here. The planetary destabilization, almost 15 years after 9-11, has never been more crystal clear. Criminal globalists within five private central banks are funding the anti-family, the anti-free speech agenda, the destruction of language agenda, the open borders agenda, the dependency agenda. They are advertising free welfare and free family services and basically anchor baby status for anyone who can get into Western Europe or the United States or Canada. This is causing hundreds of millions of people to try to get here, hundreds of thousands a week. Trains are currently shut down in many areas of Europe westbound out of Eastern Europe. There is just bedlam uh, breaking out right now across the board. And what's important to understand is this is orchestrated. 15 years after the tragic events of 9-11, we've lost more of our liberties than ever. Al-Qaeda has metastasized into ISIS and has 200,000 people attacking. Our government is clearly backing them and supporting them while acting like they're fighting them. Our politicians think we're so stupid they go on the news and they say that we need to attack Assad because he is basically backing ISIS. This is what the political ignorance of the people has allowed. And as Christ said, and as the Bible states multiple times, the people perish for lack of knowledge. And InfoWars is here just dealing out the knowledge, breaking down the facts, really trying to transcend party politics, racial politics, tribal politics, and getting right down to what the social engineers are doing from their perspective so we can make a decision and think about what destiny we want. Let's just look at some of the headlines on InfoWars.com and DrudgeReport.com. Taxpayers fleeing Democrat-run states for Republican ones. Godfather, that's Chicago, proposes largest tax increase in modern Chicago history. 94 million Americans not in the labor force. Participation rate lowest in 77. That was a depression then, basically. A huge recession of stagflation. Drop in stock market futures signals anxiety over payroll reports. Rate fate. Greenspan baffled by intense focus on Fed uh, first hike. Folks, I mean, that's like saying he's baffled by farmers worried about the farm report or about the weather report. Uh, I mean, in this system where the private Federal Reserve with its subsidiaries runs the world, the IMF, the World Bank, the XM Bank. In this type of world, where it's all based on the fiat system, that's everything. If they stop doing QE3, the economy will stall. Uh, if they do raise the rates, the economy uh, will basically stall. But I, I mean, either way, Either way, it causes problems because it's an artificial economy not based on real, tangible assets. We're going to get to an article that's on Infowars.com asking the question, the very important question, is the stock market too big to fail? And yes, we are in trouble if they do let it implode, and we're in trouble if they continue to let it grow because it sucks in the whole economy. Everything else is based on fraud, is devalued. But the Fortune 100 that control the stock market that are owned by the big banks and insurance companies, they then are able to take all the new free fiat money put out by private central banks around the world, masquerading as government institutions. They get first use of the money and create incredible monopolies of power. So they've rigged this thing to implode the world economy incrementally, set themselves up as too big to fail, where only they are left standing. And then you look at the ideology of the globalist, it's transhumanist, it's eugenicist, it's anti-human. It's sell the baby parts, lie to the public. It's feed us GMO that makes the rats sick. It is feed us fluoride. It's this, it's this criminal attitude towards the people because the banks have stolen the world. These handful of families, less than 20, that control and run all this, see the world as theirs. They've stolen it through fraud. Now they want to clear it out of the 7.5 billion people, and they're just trying to figure out how to do it. First, they got to bring in a worldwide collapse to get us really on our knees with them as the saviors before the next phase comes in. Uh, but continuing here, later in the broadcast, I'm going to have a special short message to Louis Farrakhan uh, dealing with his meeting with Eminem. And I'm going to tell you what I really think about Louis Farrakhan because I've had some critical words for Louis Farrakhan recently and I've received some criticism from people and I want to be crystal clear where I stand on Louis Farrakhan. Uh, so that is coming up. But, but all of this news 
is really what's important. The media would have us believe it's the New England Patriots quarterback being reinstated over deflating gate. Hey, if conspiracy theories are impossible, if nobody ever involves in a conspiracy, then it's impossible for football teams to cheat. And casinos don't cheat either. Now let's get to where the rubber meets the road. We can see all the things happening on the large overarching scale. But let's look at this one article from Fox News. Missouri 11-year-old fatally shoots 16-year-old intruder. The mother is off having to work. Their house has been robbed repeatedly. Uh, two thugs break in to rob the family. The mother's off having to work. The 11-year-old shoots and kills one of the intruders, runs off the other. She cooperates with the investigation, and now they're basically looking at calling in CPS because why wasn't she there? Well, you tell mothers not to have men around. You pay mothers welfare not to have men around. And then if your kid's caught playing in the backyard at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, the CPS is called. Or if your 11-year-old, in other cases, caught playing across the street uh, at the park, the police come and arrest the mother. So this is how they set this up. You know, don't talk about guns at school, but have all the video games that are shoot them up all day at home. It's like, look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't taste. Everything is a nanny state, but it doesn't make us safe. And the system knows this. And so as things unravel, as things degenerate, as things unfold like this, it doesn't matter if the cops don't want to go after the mom. They file a report and the higher ups that are the social engineers then basically stick them on the mother where you're not supposed to have your 11-year-old home with a gun to defend themselves. If they've been trained, there were you know, seven, eight-year-olds on wagon trains. There were you know, famous cases like the famous story about uh, uh, newly freed black slaves having to have their kids march 100 miles by themselves through the night to find their parents and follow a map with no weapons to defend themselves from wolves. I guess that book's Wagon Wheels. Great story. It's a true story. This is the type of thing we're talking about. So let robbers attack you, let robbers go after you, or you're abusing your children, and it's bad to have your 11-year-old defend yourself because mom's got to go out and work. This is all about domestication. That's the end game plan. Now, when I get to my message for Faircon later, I'm going to mention this story from the Associated Press. Man faces charges after tweeting, kill all the white people in town, bail set at $250,000. All I've been saying is some of the bloggers who've clearly said go out and attack white people and police and kill them have not been getting in trouble, but then other people have. Telling me, the folks connected to the Black Panther Party, the new Black Panther Party and others, not the old Black Panther Party, that was a pretty good group actually, they have been saying and doing things that if I said it, I'd be arrested. And I'm not saying I want to say this either. It's just that if I said that or you said that, you'd be arrested. So, so, so why is that happening? Why is that unfolding? I'm going to cover that more coming up later uh, after Dr. Mercola joins us. I'm shooting a report that's a message to Louis Farrakhan on that front. Shifting gears back to the big picture, I mentioned this earlier, is the stock market now too big to fail? The U.S. stock market is integral to the global financial system in two ways. And Washington Blog does a great job uh, of going over all those different areas. Yes, it's a bubble. Yes, it's filled with all this fiat currency. Yes, it's getting bigger. But if you deflate it, then that will shut the economy down. But if you don't, it's designed where only that free money, only that fiat money goes into the stock market as a place to put all of that counterfeit. And so it consolidates power for the globalists regardless, and they're social engineers. So you almost want it to come down, just like we want McDonald's to come down because they're a globalist genetic engineering operation. Just like we want the big pharma companies to come down, even though they do some good, they do very bad with their forced inoculation agenda. We want to break the GMO uh, farm companies that are trying to force us to eat their GMO. It's not that we want to break things, but they're trying to dominate us. They're trying to take us over. They're trying to wreck our future. They're trying to consolidate control in a scorched earth siege policy. So it's our right to defend ourselves by voting with our dollars to shut them down before they shut us down. That's why it's great news that Coca-Cola is in trouble. It's great news that McDonald's is in trouble. It's great news that Walmart's in trouble. Because this is the globalism they built and they wanted that was meant to consolidate power. But now as we fall, they fall. And now as we remove our support from them, they wanted us to collapse before 
and then they have the new paradigm come in.